Straddling the line between anatomical education and morbid fascination, a collection of model kits that emerged in the 1960s continue to be a fascinating and unique creation today. This is the Overlooked Hotel and this is the story of the visible man and woman. Sitting alongside the Aurora monsters and assorted airfix vehicles as the iconic model kits of the 1960s and 70s is a weird scientific figure, or more accurately pair of figures, that was for a long time a mainstay of the modelling section of toy shops. The Visible Man was that rarest of things, an educational toy with widespread mainstream appeal, a sort of anatomically correct version of operation that allowed you to assemble and disassemble human figures while gazing in wonderment at the miracle of internal organs, the skeleton and the body, all in a child-friendly yet scientifically sound casing. I always wanted a Visible Man, but for some reason never had one. Perhaps the Aurora kits always had more of a pull on my pocket money. Perhaps the Visible Man was just too costly. Perhaps my parents disapproved of the whole concept. I suspect it was a combination of all three reasons. In any case, it's to my eternal regret that I've never owned this remarkable figure, as much for the wonderful box art as the actual model kit. The man who first conceived of the Visible Man was Irving Rosenblum, who was apparently inspired by seeing a human skeleton at the American Museum of Natural History. Believing that the 1950s boom in scientific development and the fascination with the space race meant that there would be a ready market for an educational model kit, he asked his team at model making company Renwall if such a concept was feasible. Head of production Irving Ludbow took on the idea, figured that yes, it could be done, and passed it to the company's model maker, Marcel Jovin, who sculpted the original 18-inch model that would be used as the template for the final figure. A clear plastic shell that contained a skeleton and vital organs, making it a solid, if rather basic, anatomical study of the male human body. Any concerns that parents might have had about Junior exploring a naked male body were assuaged by both the scientific validity of the model and the notable lack of genitalia other than in the most rudimentary sense. With a name that smartly punned on the invisible man, a pamphlet offering an introduction to anatomy, and packaging that was a fantastic, very much of its time illustrated box, the Visible Man was launched in the autumn of 1959 for the not inconsequential price of $4.98, the equivalent of $54 today. The Visible Man nevertheless became immediately popular with kids of a scientific bent, but it also found an unexpected market. Doctors discovered that the model was not only a fun thing to assemble, but also an unexpectedly useful teaching tool, handy for it explaining to patients just what part of their body was ailing and where the errant organ sat. That and the figure made a nice prop in many an examination room. The sales of the model's kit were boosted by medical professionals and other scientists who needed to show the basic workings of our internal organs. Of course, the visible man not only appealed to would-be biologists and doctors, Ghoulish little kids rather relish the idea of not only being able to see all the internal organs, but also being able to remove them like a mad doctor. You see, this was a model kit that could be disassembled as well as assembled, all the better to enhance the model maker's understanding of the human body and the functions of its organs. If some owners chose to enhance the playability of the model by removing it from the stand and allowing their other action figures to disembowel him, well, where's the harm in that? The success of the Visible Man quickly led to the Visible Woman, which was an equally genital-free study of female anatomy that invariably became more controversial than its male equivalent, not least of all in the expanded version that included the optional extra of The Miracle of Creation, a religiously pious description of pregnancy. Kept in a separate brown box, the eight-part expansion pack, as we would now call it, allowed you to turn your visible woman into one who is seven months pregnant, 
with an alternative breastplate that held the uterus, associated organs, and, of course, the fetus. Just how the woman became pregnant, or how she was supposed to expel the fetus once fully developed, was a question left unanswered. Possibly for the best. Predictably, the visible woman, especially in its pregnant variation, proved too much for the more prudish members of society with demands that it be restricted to adults-only sale. Presumably, the sight of a naked female, or even a pregnant one with her internal organs on display and without genitalia, was seen as likely to inflame male lust and encourage female wantonness. Despite this, though, both model kits remained popular well into the 1970s and beyond as Rouenwald bit the dust and other manufacturers took up the concept, either as a continuation of the original model kits or as knockoff imitations. Typically, the original illustrated box would give way to a more basic photographic and plastic transparent packaging that made everything a lot less fun. But along the way, there would also be additions to the line, most notably the visible dog, which allowed kids a pet-friendly way of examining Rover's innards, and even the visible pigeon. And many imitators popped up over the years, offering other anatomical insights into the human brain or other body parts. There was even a very popular visible V8 engine for mechanically-minded kids. And other toys appeared on the market that also used the transparent body concept to make action figures that bit more interesting. Most notably the Japanese Shonen Cyborg range that was adapted as the much-loved Cyborg, Muton and Android line for the UK market. And which would go on to further spawn the equally translucent Micronauts. All of which is a story for another day. Given its ubiquity in toy shops for decades, we should assume that it wasn't mere coincidence that saw Pat Mills create the Visible Man comic strip, which ran for six weeks as a short story in 2000 AD during 1978. Originally planned as one of the opening strips for the comic, it instead had to wait until the publication was well underway. Perhaps its horror theme and gruesome visual showing a man who's become visible after a nuclear waste accident made it a bit of a gamble for the newly launched sci-fi comic in the wake of the action comic outrage. Again, a story for another day. Although it was a brief, self-contained tale, the character was revived years later to meet, you guessed it, the visible woman. So you can still buy your visible man and woman model kits, sadly lacking the great artwork of the originals, but sometimes now packaged with educational books on anatomy to help kids understand just what these colourful organs, assuming they've actually painted the organs, actually do. The concept seems to have spread to full-size figures in medical museums like the Welcome in London, assuming that it hasn't been removed as part of the purge of insensitive material, and I'm sure many a doctor still has one or both of the figures in their surgery. I've yet to see the visible dog in any vet's practice, though. It's one of those classic toys that never really ages. If you enjoy these dives into the forgotten past, then you might care to give this video a like, subscribe and share. It costs nothing, takes no time at all, and it helps us immensely. And let me know in the comments what your memory of the visible man and woman and dog and pigeon were. Did you ever get to assemble these kits? Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.